You remember this? I showed you this on the lawnmower maintenance video and I asked if there were any ladies who knew what this was. Well today we're going to find out. We're out in the shop. My husband and I are getting ready to move. We're going to be staying with a friend of ours until we get our house built. Um, we've purchased a little farm here in South Central Kentucky and we want to start a, our ministry. We actually already have our ministry, but we want to establish our ministry on our small farm. And one of the things that we want to do is to help people who live in the cities learn how to transition from the city to country living to wilderness survival and maintain your hold on Jesus and understand why you're living this lifestyle in the first place. And so our ministry is called Closure for Jesus. You can check out our webpage at closureforjesus.com. We also have a... Um, we are Amazon affiliates, and you can check out Closure Mercantile. Just click on the store tab on the web page, and many of the things that I've been talking about in our videos um, are on our web store. So, what is this? This actually, when you go out into the field to cut firewood with a chainsaw, is actually about the only tool you need to take with you. And uh, why is a woman talking about chainsaws in the first place? I know that seems kind of odd. But you know, I have to tell you, um, I grew up using chainsaws. I grew up on a farm down in uh, East Central Alabama. And I learned how to use these at a very early age. And uh, it was a real blessing to me because later on in life, some friends of mine and I bought some property in Adair County, Kentucky, and we lived there for almost 10 years. And it was just three ladies. And uh, we had planned to start a ministry there, but um, my friend died with breast cancer. and. Had I known now what I know, uh, had I known then what I know now, uh, I would have been able to help her a lot more. So I'm hoping that my experience in uh, healthcare, in country living, in biblical perspectives, can help somebody avoid some of the mistakes that I've made in life. And so that's why I'm doing these videos, and that's why my husband and I have our ministry and plan to establish so that we can have people come and just help them learn and hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls that we have fallen in. But at any rate, whenever my friends and I lived in Adair County, uh, Kentucky, uh, it was just us three ladies, and I was the only one who knew how to use a chainsaw. And I had purchased a, a little steel 026, just like this is a steel 026. It's the smallest industrial uh, saw that steel makes. I think they've replaced it with the 260, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I have the older model, the 26, and, and it's just an incredible saw for a lady especially because I'm a small person. I'm 5'1". I think I weigh about 100 pounds. Um, so I don't have a lot of manpower, a lot of beef like guys do. And so this is a small chainsaw, but it's incredibly powerful. And the one that I had when I lived in Adair County had an 18-inch bar on it, and I plan to get an 18 for this one. But this is a 16-inch bar. And I actually do prefer the 18-inch bar. So I want to talk to you about this because, ladies, you may find yourself in a position where you need firewood. Or maybe your husband is, you know, you're out cutting firewood and he's injured and you need to, to have the, know how to operate the chainsaw to get him unpinned or something. God forbid, you know, and, and some real forethought and common sense can avoid a lot of, of accidents, but accidents do happen. We always pray uh, before we go out and, and do anything like this that the Lord would protect us and help us to be wise. But at any rate, living on that place, just the three of us ladies and I was the only one that knew how to use a chainsaw, it was such a blessing because we didn't have to pay somebody to come and cut our firewood. We cut, up, we cut down our own trees, we cut up our own firewood, we split it with a splitting um, maul and wedges and we did all of that and and you know not having the strength that a man does you have to use your head a lot more you have to what do they say work smarter not harder and so um, I want to just share with you I'm, I'm speaking especially to ladies you know and I'm, I'm speaking from the perspective that now guys you know I mean you probably most of you know a lot more about these things than I do but I want to share from a lady's perspective uh, a little bit about uh, how to, you know, the parts of a chainsaw, how to clean it, how to take care of it, how to take the bar off, put it back on, and, and just a few specifics about chainsaws, just so that you can be more comfortable uh, in a homestead situation um, around chainsaws, and you don't have to be afraid of it, but you do have to respect it. 
and you can get hurt really quickly with a chainsaw. So let me just show you, I'm going to uh, zoom in the camera on the saw itself and I want to show you a few things about this particular saw. Now there's, you know, there's other chainsaws that are good. Husqvarna makes good saws, John Sered. I'm sure there's others that I don't know about, but um, I have had good service from steel chainsaws and that's, I, I guess you might call me a steel woman. But anyway, um, that's what we're talking about. And so it may be a little bit different on your chainsaw, but the basics will, should be pretty much the same. So let's zoom in a little bit, and uh, I'll show you some just basic maintenance things and uh, hopefully help you to become a little bit more comfortable around chainsaws. Okay, as I said, this is a steel 026. It's got the little plate on the top. It says 026 here. And as I said, this is the smallest industrial model chainsaw that still makes and I do recommend going with an industrial model they're just much heavier duty um, uh, this is the bar the bar is reversible you don't always put it in the same way you want to flip it each time that you change it I'll go into that in just a little bit the reason for that is so that it wears evenly on both sides and you can see the paint is missing on both sides of this bar so it's been it's been rotated you know quite a bit so um, if you want to, uh, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Okay, let me turn it around this way. You add the fuel here, and it's just regular uh, gasoline. And I do have a friend of mine, Brooks Fuller, shared with me. If you add this, you can get this from Walmart. Um, I think it's in, like, the boating section. But if you, you just follow the directions on the back for how much to add. Uh, the gasolines that... Are sold today really kind of eat up the carburetors on these things so if you add that fuel treatment to your gas when you mix it um, you uh, you can save your carburetor now these are two cycle engines which mean which means that you have to add the oil to the gasoline and still makes these little containers like this uh, it's a lot more expensive to buy it in these little ones they do sell the much bigger container but you have to measure out exactly how much you need and I'm not going to go into measuring how to mix the gas and stuff that should be in your owner's manual so anyway just remember 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 don't ever just put plain gas into a chainsaw you'll burn it up it has to have the oil in the gas it's a two cycle engine so this is for the oil gas mixture and this right here I don't know if you can see it well this is where you add the chainsaw bar oil that lubricates the bar if you don't have, this is a very, uh, this stuff is really, it's like, it's, it's really thick. I don't know what, what weight it is, but it's, and it's got a substance in it to make it kind of sticky so that it sticks to the bar better. But that's where you add, and ba the basic rule, whenever you have to add fuel, fill up your oil uh, for your, your lubricant for the bar and the chain. So don't neglect that. Always, always, always. And the way you open this, because they're, they're a little difficult to open just if you grab the, the outside and turn, but you can use the screwdriver end on your little chainsaw tool. We're, I'm going to show you, you know, what, what we use all this for. Just use the screwdriver end and put it in this slot here, and it makes it a lot easier if you don't have the hand strength to open these up. And don't wrench them down so tight whenever you uh, put them back on that you end up messing up the slot here with the screwdriver when you try to open them. So anyway, um, this right here, I really like the way Steel did this and I don't know if other chainsaws do this too. Your air filter is in here and it's got this little dial. You simply press in and turn it and, uh, and it comes right off and that's your air filter right there. Now it's got two little uh, s screws here. Sometimes you can you can get them with your hands, but you really want them a little bit tighter than that. Once again, you can just take the screwdriver tip and just put it right in there. Bump them back just a little bit. Now these filters will last a long, long time. A lot of times when you're cutting firewood, this it'll just be caked with sawdust. So you want to take a brush, like a very soft bristle toothbrush or something, and or even a paintbrush, a soft uh, just designate a paintbrush for this and just brush that off before you take it off. Just brush all the, the sawdust away from around it and the front of it here. And then if you need to, if it's really dirty on the back side, you can take it off. 
be very careful not to get sawdust in the carburetor. This is a carburetor here. You want to be very careful not to get sawdust in there. So sometimes what I'll do if I have stuff in here and I want to clean it out, I'll just stick my finger down in that hole or, you know, get something and put a cloth or something put over and then take that brush and brush all of the, the sawdust out of there. But be sure to cover that. That's the carburetor. You don't want to get crud in there. So when you take off the air filter, you can see you've brushed this side and you can take and brush this side as well. Now these things last a long time. It's got, I think it's got like a little screen and then it's got like, uh, it looks like some kind of felt stuff here. So they last a very long time. So just be sure you keep that clean. Keep all the sawdust cleaned off of that. Whenever I go out and cut firewood, I always um, clean my saw up whenever I bring it back and make sure that everything is, is clean. I need to watch what I'm doing instead of turning to the camera to look. Anyway, I just make sure that everything is clean and uh, put back together properly and uh, ready to go so that whenever I get ready to go cut wood the next time, all I have to do is grab my equipment and go. It's, it's clean and ready. And I believe that's the way Jesus would do. I think, you know, it, it specifies in the Bible that when he was resurrected, he folded his grave clothes. And so I think that neatness and cleanliness is very important to him. So when you tighten these, you don't want to, you see, just, just take your fingers and just bump them a little bit. You don't want them real, you know, manpower tight, just, just snug, just very snug. And then you can clean the inside of this case. It'll get sawdust all up in here and stuff too. So just clean that out. And then it just, it's got some little slots. You'll see it whenever you try to line it back up. Just line it back up and slide it back down on there. And uh, sometimes the little, um, this is the choke thing, gets in the way. And you may have to move that a little bit to get it to, to slide back on there. And then just be sure to twist the little lock back into place. So that's that. Just keep that clean. You have some fins here. Um, every once in a while, just take a brush and kind of brush that out. Or if you have an air compressor, just, you know, blow that out and keep it good and clean. This right here, I want to just show you quick. Let me turn it back around. When you're running a chainsaw, sometimes, especially if you, if you, you should never cut on the tip of a chainsaw here. You should always cut on the bottom or, or you know, if you're doing a, dip, a special kind of cut called an undercut. Maybe sometimes we can do a special video on, on just how to deal with different situations. Sometimes if you if you cut on the top of a log you'll pinch your saw and sometimes if you cut on the bottom up on a log you'll pinch your saw. So you have to know you know which way the stress is on the the, uh, the log to know whether I should cut it from the top or from the bottom. So that's that's subject for another video. But anyway I wanted to show you this. On the steel chainsaw this is a fa safety feature. As you're holding the saw cutting wood if you happen to, to hit something with the tip of the bar and it kicks back, it will kick back on you. This is a chain break. It will, it will come and hit your hand, and you heard that kind of engage, and that locks the chain, so it will not turn. And so and that's a wonderful safety feature. It doesn't shut the engine down. It just completely locks down the chain so it won't turn, so that if it kicks back on you. So it's always good to, to make sure before you crank your chain to make sure that the chain is break is off because it it's a little harder to crank and get it running but uh, that is a nice safety feature and if you ever for a moment set the saw down while you're cutting always engage that safety lock okay I want to show you a little bit more about the bar and chain now the way on a steel chainsaw you take the, the bar off is these two nuts right here and that's what this side of the wrench is for, okay? Now these have to be fairly tight. I mean, you don't have to stand on it and jump up and down, but you do want them fairly tight. So we'll break the nuts loose here, and uh, we'll break this down and show you a little bit more about the bar and chain. Did you notice how the bar dropped whenever I loosened that? We'll talk about that here in just a little bit whenever we put it back on. That's, a, that's an important thing to notice. Okay, you just take these nuts off. Be sure to set them aside so they don't get knocked off somewhere. We'll put them over there. And then this, this plate just slides off. And when I'm cleaning, this gets all caked up with, with uh, 
oily chainsaw, uh, oily sawdust and stuff, so I clean that out real, real well too, so, um, so that it doesn't. You know, I got ahead of myself, but anyway, um, I, I, I'm going to put this back on here just a second and show you that there's a slot. You see that hole right there? Whenever you get ready to loosen or tighten your chain, and I'll show you a little bit more thoroughly in just a minute, there's a screw right in there, and you can just loosen these and stick your screwdriver in there and, and turn that screw, and it will loosen and tighten the chain. I'll show you more on that in just a minute. I should have showed you that before I took it off, but anyway... We'll set that aside. Okay, this is the this is right here is the uh, where the chain fits on the side of the engine. This little sprocket here, and they it has holes here that fit a little peg. And when you turn this screw in here, let me zoom the camera in just a little bit so you can see that just a little bit better. Um, there's a little screw in there that whenever you loosen or tighten that screw, that's what moves the the uh, chain to tighten it or loosen it right here this screw fits through that slot there and you can turn it to tighten or loosen the chain that loosens it and that tightens it okay I'm just going to take it off and then we'll show you a little bit more about the bar you kind of pull it off pull it back a little bit take it off the sprocket back here okay Get the camera zoomed in too much, sorry. All right. Now we'll talk about the chain in just a minute. Let's talk about the bar. Chainsaw bar is a very interesting thing. This one has a sprocket on the end, which I really like. Um, that turns a lot better. Some of them have a little uh, hole for grease down here. I, personally, I, I really don't think that's necessary because you have the oil that comes in from the... Uh, from the chainsaw bar oil. Now, if you look on the, the side of the bar where you took the, the chain the bar off, there's a little slot right here. And that's where the bar oil comes out. And it, it goes right into this little uh, oil. There's a little hole right there. If you can see that. These two are the pegs where whichever way you have the bar it fits on the bar that tightens or loosens the chain. That's what that is. But this smaller hole right here is for where the oil comes into the bar. That groove right and there is called the gauge. And if you ever go to get another chain or get an extra bar for your saw, you'll need to know because the, it, the, the sprocket and the bar and the chain all have to match. Now that's beyond the scope of this video too, but the best thing to do is just to take your saw with you to the saw shop if you need a new one. But these bars will last a long time. You can actually do a lot of work on them. I actually have put mine right here on the edge. Sometimes it'll get worn more on one side and you'll have a sharp little lip here. You can take a, a bench grinder, and I've done this, it's very easy, and just, just run that very lightly right down the edge there and knock that off. And a, a good saw shop actually can, can squeeze this gauge back together so that... Um, so that your bars will last a very long time and that's why you switch it you see this is upside down the still writing if you turn it this way it's right side up and uh, that's what you want to do every time you you check you take your bar off to clean it flip it over the other way whenever you put it on and it's got the oil holes so on both sides so that no matter which way you um, put it on the saw it will get it will get oiled and so that oil runs down the chain and lubricates everything. And that's why I don't think you really need a grease tip on this. But these sprockets are really nice. It makes the chain run a lot smoother. I, I really like that, that feature. It seems to me, too, that that seems to help the chain not to, uh, to jump off the bar a little bit better. Now, I don't know if you can see it on here. Let me see if I can... It's kind of hard to see. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but there's uh, writing on the bar right here, and that will let you know what the gauge is, what the pitch is. The pitch is, I know I'm, I'm getting a little technical, but the pitch is, if you count three of these rivets here and divide by two, that's, that's the pitch. This one I think is three-eighths. I can't really see that on there, but anyway, that you can uh, 
sort of make out the writing there and that will give you all the information that you need the, the gauge and the pitch and then the tooth count is actually just how many teeth you actually have on the chain there and so all that information has to match up if you go to get a new bar and chain from your chainsaw that it's very specific so you have to make sure that you get the right bar and chain and like I said that information will tell you or the best you know if you're not sure just take it to a saw shop and they can tell you so but anyway that's a little bit about the bar now um, maintenance for the bar one thing you want to do and I always try to keep like a um, this is just a safety uh, paper clip you can whenever you um, want to clean your your uh, bar just take that paper clip and just run it right down right down that slot and you can see I'm getting a little bit of stuff out so I didn't do as good a job as I thought cleaning it just run it right down that that slot there my hands kind of in the way but just stick it in that slot see I'm getting a little bit of stuff out there you can see and just clean out that slot okay that's where the chain runs you can also take it take the uh, the paper clip or any kind of wire that you have you can even use a pin and make sure that these oil holes are cleaned out because if that bar runs hot you'll actually get like a blue it, it looks burnt uh, uh, where the bar overheats if you don't have enough oil on it this bar actually is pretty good I don't really see where it's been overheated you know burn marks or anything on this one I actually bought this saw off eBay um, and it has really good compression I can if I have if I remember it I'll show you what uh, kind of a layman's easy way to tell if a saw has good compression so just clean that out and then uh, you also want to make sure that all of this area of the saw is clean it will get sawdust all packed up in any everywhere up in here just just basically clean it all off do some housekeeping I want to point something out to you while I've got the saw broken down you see these spikes here now sometimes this little bar will will loosen up and you want to you want to tighten these little screws up that hold it but this is a tool to help you uh, when you're cutting wood I see people trying to manhandle a saw through a piece of wood a lot of times and what these spikes are for is to actually jam them into a log and you can pivot off of them and use it as as a pivot just pull up on the end of the chainsaw it saves a lot of strength and uh, a lot of effort and so be sure to to learn how to use these they're very sharp and pointy and that's what that's for you just kind of jab it into the tree and use it as a pivot point to 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 cut uh, you know around a, a log whenever you're cutting firewood so remember that so when we get ready to put the chain back onto the bar and mount it back onto the saw you want to make sure that you get the chain going the right direction now how do you tell let's see if we can get this I don't know if you can see that for sure but you can see kinda of there's a an angled and pointy part of the chain there you see that that has to be pointing away from the front of the chainsaw pointing forward like that okay you see how my saw is so that has to be pointing forward okay so let's put this on so here's the bar I think it was upside down the last time so we're gonna flip it right side up this time and we'll put that on I always put it on the nose of the the bar first and kinda get that sprocket lined up and you wanna make sure that you get it in the in the grooves there all the way down and I'm just going to set it down a second because I realized I didn't loosen this screw here and it's easier to get it on if you loosen that screw a little bit you can see this that screw this screw right here moves this bar forward and backward and that's what adjusts and tightens or loosens the chain for you okay now when you put the bar on you want to mount it on these two bolts right here and these two bolts have a little shoulder and you want to make sure that you get this slot on the bar completely up on the shoulders of these two little bolts it's just a small shoulder but you'll see it when you look at the chainsaw so once you mount it you're gonna uh, make sure we get it back in the slot good I just hold it something like that and if you're afraid you're gonna cut yourself you can wear some some kind of gloves or something but if you're careful you won't cut yourself so you just slide it back up on the those two bolts make sure that you get it up on the shoulders like I showed you and then um, sometimes it's easier just to put it on the sprocket first 
line that up and then you can slide it forward to go on the, the bolts and then once it's setting on those uh, on those shoulders you can kind of just hold it in place with your thumb now you notice how the chain is loose we're gonna fix that in just a minute I'll show you how so I just kind of keep my finger on it and then I bring back my little plate here get my plate ready and then I'm gonna hold up on the bar to make sure that it stays on the shoulders of those bolts and I'm going to mount my little plate back on there, line it up on the bolts, slide it on and you can hold that in place. Now you can let go of the bar because it's not going to, the plate is holding them in place. Put your nuts back on, just finger tight. Okay, and now we're going to use our screwdriver, put it in there, and I can feel it seat in that screw. Remember I showed you the screw that loosens and tightens? Then I'm going to put a little bit of upward pressure. See how the bar will come up a little bit? You'll always want to hold up on it as you tighten the chain. So you tighten the chain up. I usually just tighten it just till the bottom of the chain touches the bar. And then I'm going to snug up on my bolts just a little bit, my nuts here I mean, just snug them up a little and then check it. If you can lift, that's about right, you could actually go a little bit tighter. If you can lift the, the uh, tooth completely out of the, the slot there on the bar, that's a little too loose. I can't quite lift it and this could be tightened just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to back off on the nuts just a little bit. You don't want to tighten it as tight as you think you need it before you tighten down on the nuts because when you tighten those nuts, I've, in my experience, it seems like it makes it a little tighter than you actually had it. So just turn it just a little bit more and then tighten the nuts back up. And then you can uh, check again. Yeah, see, that's, a, that's just about perfect. You want to be able to pull it up just a little. If you get it too tight, it's hard on the saw, it's hard on the bar, it's hard on the chain and uh, it, it just doesn't turn well so that's about what you, that's about what you want right there and then make sure that you tighten the nuts fairly snug about like, like that I mean I know you can't see I'm not torquing it or anything but that's about all you need so that's just a few basics about chainsaws maybe it'll help you to be just a little bit more comfortable using a chainsaw um, we can actually go over like safety um, in a different video that's really not what I intended in this one in this one I just wanted to show you a few things about a saw that maybe ladies if you're out helping your husband or your fiance or boyfriend or whatever or just your brothers even um, with firewood you can know how to help with the saw now I want to give you one tip Sometimes that I always you know did. you do occasionally get a saw stuck in a tree and I always had two bars and an extra I always had more than one chain. I think I had probably close to a dozen chains at one point. Um, but I always had an extra bar so that if I got my saw stuck in a log, I just removed the bar and chain, put on the other, you know, just took the head of the saw off of the bar and chain that was stuck, left that in the tree, and I would put another bar and chain on the saw head and go about my business, and eventually I could get that, that stuck bar and chain out. So that is one thing that, that you know, I found very useful and uh, I had to use it a few times to get myself unstuck. So at any rate, just remember to keep a, some kind of little piece of wire, gym clip or um, electrical wire, electric, you know, electric fence line or something like that handy to clean out the grooves and the oil holes and little nooks and crannies on the chain. So I'll keep it clean. Keep the air filter clean. Keep the bar and chain clean. Keep the, the, the sprocket area clean and the oil where the oil comes out clean. And always remember, whenever you mix the fuel, always put the oil in the fuel for a chainsaw and always add bar oil whenever you fill up the, the fuel for the chainsaw. So that's just basically what I wanted to cover in this video and I hope that this was helpful for you. And uh, we'll be doing some more spiritual videos soon and uh, I kind of have something on my heart that I'd like to speak to the young people about and hopefully we're in the process of moving right now um, so I'm kind of kind of tied up right now, but there is something on my heart that I would like to share with young people. So hopefully I can get that video done in the next few weeks. See you on the next video. I forgot to show you how to test compression 
if you grab a chainsaw and hold the crank handle up like this, if the saw just completely drops, it doesn't have good compression. But this one is just dropping by little bits. Kind of hard to do. But it just, it's dropping by little bits. That means it's got pretty good compression. This saw has a lot of life left in it. A saw that just drops, don't buy it.